Hello players, so you've got a Rift, you've got three sensors, and now you've got poor tracking quality, 802, 8602, 8603, and 860 PP. Well, let's fix it. Okay, so I'm going to assume that we've done some basic troubleshooting first. You've checked that the USB drivers are up to date on your machine. You've checked you're not overloading them with 6,000 external hard drives all trying to draw current at the same time. You just want your three sensors and your touch controls to work and you followed the Oculus Rift setup procedure precisely and every single time you're getting poor tracking quality. Okay, so there is a couple of things that are not listed in the setup guide. So sometimes one of the reasons this error gets thrown up is that the headset cannot be seen by all three sensors at the same time. Now this isn't always the case but it does happen sometimes and it isn't actually listed in the Oculus documentation as far as I'm aware of. There is an Oculus page that's for support and troubleshooting which I recommend you go through before buying one of these. Now one of these is a USB PCIe card, powered USB PCIe card, and this should hopefully fix this issue, which is usually caused by not enough bandwidth. Now, even if you are using, say, two USB 3.0s and one 2.0, technically they should be on different controllers on the motherboard. However, on some motherboards, the USB 2.0 controller leeches off the 3.0 controller, still limiting the total amount of bandwidth for that USB controller. Are you with me? No. Good. The good news is this should solve most of the problems. This is about 20 pounds from Amazon. Link for this particular one is in the description below. And this is the one that Oculus recommends if you are having these issues. If you've never installed anything in the PCIe slot before, it's dead simple and I'll take you through that right now. So step one in installing any hardware is to turn off the system. Okay, so now the fun bit, right, is unplugging all the cables and taking the system out. Okay, so if you never opened up your machine before, one tip is to always be uh, ESD protected. You can get wrist straps, ankle straps, that will prevent any static discharge from damaging your board. If you do not have that in a pinch, you can connect the power supply to the main socket and have the power supply turned off. That will also give you some static protection there. Okay, so this one right here is the one that I installed before. Now, apparently this one is no good. It isn't recommended by the Oculus spec, and as you can see, I still had tracking issues, even with those. One we've got right now is called the Inatech ATU3FR-5021DE. It's a nice sexy model name there. So what we've got in this box is a SATA to SATA splitter and a SATA to Molex splitter and the actual device and a driver CD guide there what we won't be using there. It does come with an instruction manual and it's pretty much well that's the software side not the hardware side so anyway so there's that. Take this and th Throw it away immediately. This is the worst invention ever. These are Molex to SATA splitters, and if you've ever, ever had one in your life, you will know how much of a pain in the ass they are and how dangerous they are. These are known to burn out pretty quickly to cause fires and shorts and all kinds of things. Molex to SATA is definainly not worth it. If you do not have an extra SATA port on your device, you can use the SATA splitter, and that should be a lot safer than the SATA to molars. So I've got a SATA power connection ran through this little socket in my case right here for nice cable management. Okay, so you can use any of these PCIe lanes here, uh, the X16, the X1, etc. But keep in mind if you are going to use one of these, you are limiting your SLI options of a second graphics card. So if you have the space and it can fit, pop one there and there's actually one on my board on the other side at the top but then you have to get power to it and it can start getting a little bit messy. I'm not gonna be running SLI in this machine 
probably ever because it's always a bit janky. So the bottom slot is fine for me. Okay, so what we can do is this notch lines up with this notch right here and it should just slot in provided you've removed this back plate here. Once that's in, we can screw the locking screw in the top and connect the SAIT power. And that should be good to go. So we'll get the side back on and get it powered up. All the cables connected at the back and I've got a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic. So we'll get them connected, get this back up, how it was before, except this time we're going to plug the two 3.0 cables into this, as well as the Oculus Rift headset, and put the 2.0 cable onto the system. So let's see how that works. Since it's 2017 and nobody uses optical drives anymore, head on over to the innertech.com support site and download the USB 3.0 drivers. So we have installed the card, we have installed the drivers, we have had our restart, now it's time to run the sensor setup again. Heading over to devices, everything looks good. Go for sensor setup. Continue. Touch controller not detected. So we'll turn one of those on. 3.0, 3.0, 2.0. Okay, everything looks good. Let's carry on. Okay, so that is the easiest common fix for the poor tracking quality errors that people keep seeing and keep getting thrown up by Oculus. So installing the new USB PCI card and running two 3.0 sensors through it plus the headset has seemed to have fixed all of the poor tracking quality sensor issues. Nine times out of ten that's going to be the case that there just isn't enough USB bandwidth on the motherboard and we have to supply more through the PCIe lanes. Which is a bit of a shame really and kind of does score up one for the HTC Vibes tracking sensor array, array which just requires power as opposed to USB which in hindsight seems a lot more logical but who knows. But I hope that can fix your poor tracking quality sensor issues especially when using three of these sensors at the same time. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass. The original PCIe USB card that I had just didn't have enough power to deliver it to the sensors and plus any other peripherals that I might have had in there, which is a shame, but the one from Inertech is the one that's recommended by Oculus and should solve all the problems. Link for that particular USB PCIe card is in the description below. Let me know if this helped solve your poor tracking quality sensor issues. And if you're still getting them, let me know in the comments below as well and what you've tried to fix it. Until next time, keep playing.